Okay, so today we're talking about a bug zapper. These things are super popular, especially with the warm weather coming. This one's by Cabas. It is rated for commercial use, indoor or outdoor, and it is UL rated, and they show the different bugs that it's supposed to kill, and that's something that I'm going to talk about in this review. We're going to zap some bugs and look at them afterwards. UVA bulbs attract insects. We know that if you're around a light outdoors, especially in the summer, porch light, something like that, they are everywhere. UVA bulbs attract insects to a cylinder. They misspelled cylinder there. Hmm. This one comes with its own hanging bracket. It's a nice heavy duty metal bracket that you can mount on a post or something. And I did not use that, but I'm showing it to you. And here it is. The cap is UL listed bug zapper. This comes with a nice long six foot cord. My other one by Floatron has a little short pigtail cord on it. And I got this because my Floatron bulb died for the third time, so I'm looking for something else. This thing's heavy built, and I like this kind of gnarling hair built into the top. Nice thick plastic on this housing, and it's cylinder shaped. The uh, Floatron that I have is shaped like a square. And uh, the bottom piece comes off here. This is one part of it I wish they had changed. I'd like to leave that bottom open so the bugs fall through. And of course there's screws on the top if you ever have to replace this housing. This thing is 14 inches tall, so it's good size, and it does have a good weight to it. It's about 10 inches in diameter also. So if you're worried about the space, and this is that heavy duty bracket here, nice heavy metal material, comes with the screws so you can put that in. Again, I did not use it, but uh, I just wanted to show it to you. Now we're gonna take this bottom plate off. You know, you can't leave this bottom plate off because this plastic piece activates that switch, which is on the right there at the three o'clock position. That silver metal piece there, right in through the U-shape, you push and it clicks a switch, it turns it on and off. So if you put it on backwards, it's not gonna come on. There's a little piece of plastic that sticks in there. Now here I'm just showing you the screws that hold it in place. There's only two of them, and there's a hole in the middle there so you can anchor this if you needed to do that. And inside there's another plastic insert with two screws, Phillips head. I highly recommend you get one of these canned air dusters because you're going to be able to blow out the bugs with it. Super handy. And then uh, here's the plug for your light bulb. It has a foam pad on one side, and of course we're looking at the bottom here. Again, I wish they made this so that I could leave it open, but you just can't. I'd like the bugs to fall out. I don't want to catch them in that little bin. When you look at the light bulb, it seems broken. It's kind of flimsy and it, it moves a lot here in the housing, but that turns out is normal. And the bulb works just fine and it has a threaded screw in. Ceramic receiver right there, just screw it to the right and tighten it right up. And then put the plastic pieces back in. They give you this little brush for sweeping out the bugs. I don't want that, I'm using air. Here it is outside hanging on my clothesline and it is a little cool today when we're testing it. So it's in the 60s, the warmer the day, those hot summer nights, for example, you're gonna get a lot of bugs. And I'm gonna show you how this uh, holds up in wind and rain as well. There it is, it does not hum, it's nice and quiet. The light, of course, is going to attract the bugs. Some of the other bug zappers offer different lures for insects, uh, lures for mosquitoes, highly controversial, whether or not they attract mosquitoes, we're gonna test that out. And uh, here it is at night. And the bugs are coming to it again. If it was really warm, there would be more bugs. And I'm going to test this over a period of days, of course. And we're going to show you the results. What kind of bugs does it zap? That's the big question here. And here they are. There's a lot of mayflies in there. Some other kind of flying mosquito type bugs. There aren't too many moths in this collection group. I did get moths several days later. We're going to go over that. And look at this thing. It is jam-packed with bugs. So it's working. It's zapping them. And I got out my little air duster there and I cleared it for another wave of bugs here. And again, when you use the air duster, it just blows them right out of it. You don't have to pull that bottom plate off each time. But there is a huge cluster. The more bugs that build up, the less powerful the zapper is going to be. Because they're all drawing on that electricity. You notice these alternating bars. They have to contact both bars to make it electrocute them. And uh, what happens to them after you zap them? Do you just throw them away? Nope. Watch at the end of the video and I'll show you what you do. What do you feed dead bugs to? You feed them to birds, of course. And here we go. Wow, it really loaded right up. So, but you notice there aren't too many moths here. The mayflies and so on. We're going to get a bunch of moths in the next round, that's for sure. And uh, for those of you who are 
enjoying sitting outside and you just want to hear your bug zapper zap bugs, this is great for that. I think it's going to last a long time. It does not draw much power. I think it's pulling about 40 watts. And uh, that's it. it. Keeps fingers out. Oh, the other thing is large moths came up to it. They can't get in. So if you're worried about your Cecropias or your lunar moths and things like that, luna moths, then uh, they don't get in. They can't be injured. So it has a nice protective guard. There's plenty of distance between the outer shell and the inner active electric bars there. And of course the light bulb itself does nothing but attract and it does not do any zapping itself. It's that metal grid in the cylinder outlying it there. And there's a plastic spacer that they are passed through. So you don't have to worry about these things touching and shorting out. This is UL listed underwriters laboratories. If you're buying anything electric, electronic or whatever, you want it to have a UL rating. Here we are. High winds. Let's see how it holds up. It just hangs there. So that cylinder shape is a big benefit. It is physically pretty heavy. So it doesn't swing around a lot. How about the rain? Yeah, that uh, housing cover over the top there keeps the rain from going in and interacting with the uh, electric grid there. I did uh, set it out and turn it on in the rain just to see if we could get any zapping or if there would be any shorting, and there isn't. So this thing is definitely pretty good for being out in the open and even without being under an overhang of a building, for example. And uh, I'm impressed with it, I have to say. Let's get inside and see what kind of bugs we got. Oh, look at that. I'm a beekeeper, so it did not hurt my feelings at all to see that the moth here is a wax moth. These are wax moths. They lay their eggs in my beehives, and then of course the little wax worms get in there and they eat the uh, wax comb. And look at that thing right there. That is a caterpillar moth. So the tent caterpillars, if you've ever seen those on your trees. So when I look at this pile of bugs, and uh, we see all the different moth species that were caught. We found potato tuber moths, clothes moths, meal moths, milkweed tiger moths were in there, and sod webworm moths. So I have to tell you, I'm not too unhappy with uh, the moth collection here. Every moth that I found inside this zapper uh, is definitely doing damage to plants. And uh, now my chickens catch moths and eat them if they're down in the grass. But look at all these bugs. And there were some mosquitoes in there. I wouldn't consider this a huge frontliner for zapping mosquitoes. There were only a handful of mosquitoes and what drew them to the light is anyone's guess. But it definitely killed some. What I really am happy with is the fact that it does take out these wax moths. Of course a healthy beehive isn't going to be taken over with wax worms anyway. But uh, the good news is it didn't zap anything that I personally consider beneficial. If you see a bug in that collection laying on this table and you identify that as a hugely beneficial bug or you've got some information about them, go ahead and write it down in the comment section below the video. I'd be interested in knowing that. Look at this white moth. This is a yellow woolly bear moth. So of course, uh, that thing, uh, woolly bear caterpillars, which go on the garden and of course attack some plants. Here's my cleanup crew. I'm gonna feed these dead bugs to the chickens. And uh, in fact, if it had an open bottom where I would be hanging it, I would just love to put this out uh, and leave the bottom open. And then the chickens, when they get out of their coop every day, would just run out there and start eating these bugs and uh, they clean them right up. They go after the moths first, no big surprise there, but they eat them all. Everything from the little mayflies right down to the mosquitoes that we got. Great animal protein. That one's, that hen there is getting herself a uh, moth. And uh, the moths that I found inside of it, every one of them was a species of moth that does a lot of damage. Potato tuber moths, are you kidding? The clothes moths, my wife was not at all happy when I dumped that on our dining room table. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. There's uh, links in the video description if you're interested in the zapper or the can of air. Let me know if you have any questions at all. Thanks for watching.